And I think one other thing to, to add here, which is actually quite useful, is I guess looking beyond the looking beyond the neutral definitions of health because i suppose if you look at the neutral definitions of health like for example the world health organization um we've got that complete state of well-being i guess that's positive um and then you've got health the ability to adapt and self-manage then you've got uh, one that i think is is really interesting to ponder and that is basically the idea of flourishing and there's a good paper on this by vanderveel um in 2019 and other authors but Effectively, what, what they propose is this understanding of health in terms of flourishing and that that being, again, that ideal that we're looking for. And the term flourishing used for thousands of years and literally meaning to grow or to prosper represents a powerful way to view health in its fullest sense. That's what they claim. OK, but what do they actually mean? So what they try to do is you know put together a number of different domains and they've got questions or statements um that are flourish there it's effective their flourishing measure a flourishing measure and i'm just going to read out a couple of them because i think it's worth at least pondering these when you're questioning your own health because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily um always come into to how we think about health so the first domain is is happiness okay and the question is overall how satisfied are you with your life as a whole these days then in general, how happy or unhappy do you usually feel? Then mental and physical health in general, how will you rate your physical health? Now, the one thing I suppose to interject on there is that the really important thing here is that sometimes when you get into these domains of understanding health in terms of flourishing, you could actually be overlooking things that are actually detrimental to your health. Because for example, in general, how do you rate your physical health? Like, it's not so clear how to reconcile that with the understanding that most of the diseases that are a burden on the healthcare system at the moment are chronic long-term diseases that you don't feel. Something's really important because you could have high blood pressure and just not know, okay? And it could be a significant threat to your health. And if you just rate how you feel or how you rate your physical health, you might be like, well, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I've never had any issues. But that 160 over 100 blood pressure could be pumping away in the background and putting you at high risk of stroke, okay? So that's that's something that I would just interject on there. Now, the other things that they mention are- well, how, This as well, well, to really put that in context. Like, if you've never been, quote unquote, healthy, how the fuck are you supposed to know what that feels like? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like right. if you've just always been- say you have a potential for a 10 out of 10 health and you've just always been at a three, right? How do you know what being healthier feels like three for you? You're like, great. I feel fantastic here because you know, I'm not falling apart, right? That's your best ever. You're most well rested, etc. Is a three out of 10, right? You're dehydrated. You've never exercised. You've done whatever, but it's still the best health that you've ever been in, <laughs> you know? So you're like, yeah, I'm in my best health, right? But it's not the best you could potentially be and this is also further con confounded and we didn't dig too much into it we might go back in a second um in terms of your environment as well plays into this because again if you're at that three out of ten right and everyone else around you is also a three out of ten or potentially a two out of ten right they're all a two out of ten you're going to be like wow i'm in fucking fantastic shape you know i'm in the best health of my life because your context for that your environment for that is set up in such a way that you're like oh, these other people have far worse health than me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have good health. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think a lot of these questions do get at, at some messy areas. And, and the next one is just how would you rate your, your overall mental health? You know, similar, similar issues there. The next is meaning and purpose, which is something that's interesting and kind of goes back to what I said previously. And the questions that they ask are, overall, to what extent do you feel the things you do in your life are worthwhile? And then a statement they make that you agree or disagree with, or to a certain degree, is I understand my purpose in life. Okay. Again, like really difficult. Okay. Really difficult to try to pin those things down. Character. I always act to promote good in all circumstances, even in difficult and challenging situations. Again, so difficult because we have to then answer what does it mean to, to promote good? You know, is, is it just personal moral conscience? Um, and is that something that you allow to be influenced by others, by your society? Who taught you your morals? Absolutely. Um, so that, that's, 
that that's such a difficult one. But but I actually think that like I'm I'm saying it's difficult as in it's challenging. I'm not saying that these shouldn't be considered within the framework of health because I absolutely think they should. Um, and I think that as as healthcare professionals or as people who are concerned about our health, I actually think it's really important to consider that stuff, which is why I mentioned previously that questions around your meaning and purpose in life and, you know, a shared understanding with others and seeing not dehumanizing people and stuff. I think that all that is incredibly important for health. And I think that it should be discussed. So the, there are other points then I'll just fly through them. I'm always able to give up some happiness now for greater happiness later. Really difficult thing to do, but definitely a mark of maturity, I think. Um, close social relationships. I'm content with my friendships and relationships. My relationships are as satisfying as I would want them to be. And then finally, financial stability. How often do you worry about being able to meet normal monthly living expenses? And how often do you worry about safety, food, or housing? Again, interesting questions, but you have to ask yourself there, you know, are, are they the only things I worry about? Is it just safety, food, or housing? You know, does that vary by the country that you live in? Are they, are they the only needs that you're trying to meet? Because many people would say that, you know, safety, food, or housing are, are very basic needs. And for many people in the West, if they could only meet that, they still might have a lot of anxiety about their financial stability and everything. Whereas if you were to ask, if you were to give someone in a very undeve underdeveloped nation, safety, food, and housing, they'd be, you know, totally content. That's what they're fighting for. Okay. So again, social context matters. As you can see, these questions, if you were to go through them, I think they should be used as sort of like a life analysis type of thing, where you basically review where you're at, what you need to work on, um, rather than trying to get, come out with some number out the other end saying, you know, I'm 70% healthy or whatever. But look, that, that table we will include all this in the, in the podcast notes so that you can review it anyway.